Welcome back. Last week we did a kind of full dress steelhead fly uh, and I kept mentioning about the original pattern and how I kind of started out with that and added these wings and went back to the original blah blah blah. But uh, as you can see this is a really it's a beautiful fly. It's very elegant. Lots of steps. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the original one which this was kind of an adaptation from that. And I'll just put the original one in the vise and I'll show you a couple other ones too. This is the kind of the OG version right here. Uh, it's, it's, this is the one that I said that I caught more fish on uh, than any of the others. And it was basically a hexagenia, uh, trying to look more like a hexagenia nymph, but it ended up fishing everywhere I fished it. It's, a, it's really good on lakes. It's, it's, I don't know why, even places that don't have them. I think it's just because it's earth tone. This is one that's kind of a little bit more dressed. You can set in there. Yep. I mean, this is just one that I use Cock de Leon on. I'll show you this in a second. Put some jungle cock on it and did the head red like I normally do. I kind of got addicted to this copper color that's in the vise. But this one here, this, this is kind of the original. I didn't put the jungle cock on in the original ones. Uh, that's kind of high dressed, but uh, it's got the red head and... Uh, that was kind of my signature, but <clears throat> so anyway, uh, I'm gonna. This is a pretty quick fly, and and if you do this, and this style of body is the really the key to it because it's really a pretty, very elegant body, and you. But you can do that with other things, and I'm gonna mention that now just so I don't forget. Somebody wrote in and said to me, "Can you ever finish a, a sentence?" <laughs> I do kind of choo -choo all over the place. I even notice it when I watch it. But I'm going to mention in here in a minute about using this as a tail. Uh, I'll put this up here so you can see it, and then we'll be done with it. But you, I'm going to use a different material. If you're going to use, uh, if you're going to use the barred uh, marabou like I use the barred turkey, it's really hard to find. This stuff is not hard to find. This is just three and a half inch, you know, three to five inch uh, barred tan mar marabou. And as you can see, I put it right next to this one. I think that's still, that's all in there, isn't it? And so when you put this in here, put it right beside it, you can see it gets almost virtually the same body and it's very readily, readily available. Whereas what I'm going to use for the one I'm going to tie is barred model turkey marabou, which to the best of my knowledge, like I said on the first one I did, I can't find it anymore. If you can find it, great. Tell me where to get it. But uh, so for this fly, we're going to start. I'm going to tie this fly with a 79.89, the TMC, to another, to the best of my knowledge. I don't think they make this hook anymore. But it doesn't matter if you're going to use a 79.99, which is just the heavy wire, the same bend, same everything. That's just the heavier wire. I also tie it in the Alec Jackson style hooks. Uh, I, I tended to use this hook more with the winged ones. It's got a, a and this is, I don't even know if Daiichi makes these anymore, but it has a longer bend to the hook, right? It's kind of, it's a style of hook. It's not, you know, a lot of people make Alec Jackson hook. There, it's a, a kind of a longer bend to the hook. And it's a really gorgeous hook when you tie it, especially on those low dress things. And so, but you know, regardless, uh, if you want to tie that with, if you want to tie it with a ring eye hook, if you want it a down eye, I just kind of did it with this one more out of tradition, just because it was back when I was spending a lot of time in BC and I was just more, more wanted to have more traditional style. But I can assure you that if you put this on a ring eye or straight 3X long, whatever hook you want, uh, 3x is about where you're going to need to be to have this marabou work well but whatever <clears throat> you know you'll figure that out and what you like because once you see how to do this you can adapt it to a lot of things and by the way i do this on small flies too where i'll do just the marabou tail and you just wrap it the same way and i, and I do it on my uh, my calabatus. calabatus nymphs thank you uh, i do it on my calabatus nymphs up on the lake and there's really nothing to it. It's just tail, body, and a little bit of hackle. And it's just, it's so swimmy, as you'll see. So, going on forward, I got the 79-89 hook. I'm going to use, I'm going to use 12-watt uh, Semperfly Nano Silk. 
and it's white. And I'm going to show you what I, because I always tie all my flies, traditionally my wet flies, I tied with this burgundy or wine colored 6 aught Danville. And I, I am completely 100% addicted to this Semper Fly stuff. I, I just, to this, to the GSP stuff. And so this is 12 aught and it's, it's white. It comes in a lot of colors, but I, I find that I hit it with a Sharpie. I've got videos from a way back when talking about that. <clears throat> but I hit this with just a regular red Sharpie, which you'll see. And it, by the time I put the stuff on it, the, the varnish on it, it looks exactly like that burgundy used to. So that's the thread I'm going to use. For tail, I'm going to use this barred turkey marabou. This is, uh, like I said, really, really hard to come by. This is really, really easy to come by. And as you saw when I showed them earlier, it's almost an identical body. For This will also be the body and the tail. Uh, for the ribbing, I'm going to use, and this is kind of, this is indicative of the feather that you have, right? So, and you can do, you can do those bodies, by the way, out of any single, any color marabou you have. It works just fine to wrap them the way we're going to. But what I do with mine, because it was supposed to be, when you look at this one or whatever, this one's kind of dark. If it's, if it's a light colored body right here, I usually use a furnace or a dark uh, brown grizzly dyed hackle but I usually use furnace or if it's a darker body then I go with like a medium bar ginger you know just a just a regular medium bar ginger uh, if you want to put a Cree in there or whatever you've got that'd be fine or just a cream I basically just contrast slightly with the color of the uh, with the color of the body and the uh, collar which is going to be the real accent is a kitten, I mean a squirrel, just kidding. It's a black, it's a pine squirrel dyed black. It's just a little, these are super soft. If you want to substitute this with ostrich, uh, or you could do it, I've done it on some with peacock. I, you can do it, it just won't be nearly as pretty, it won't be nearly as classy, and you, it, you'll like this look a lot better if you take the time to do it. So, we're going to do this with and, and one more thing, just so I talk as much as I possibly can. Uh, I can't find that one. Last week, or maybe I was going to do this before, this was this head here was done with copper. Kind of got into this copper colored. It's kind of orangey copper. I'm really digging this, and I think it looks really, really good against this body. And so that was kind of a... I, I, I was going to do it because I'm kind of leaning this way, but I want to go full traditional with the color, so... Uh, and one more thing, uh, that one has fiery ginger. Uh, this is a Coq de Leon, the one that I had in there. This one that had the uh, eyes in it. This has the, and it's a little dressier, right? So if you're going to go, if you're going to go in with the whole peak, you know, the jungle cock eye and that whatnot, I did that with this fiery ginger. This has quickly become my favorite color. My, this, I, I can't quit putting this on flies. It's just a unique, it's, it's just Coq de Leon. It's just a really unique color. It's called Fiery Ginger. It's, I, I'm just getting really addicted to it. So, and that's what that one with the jungle cock eyes was. Just trying to dress it up a bit. So, as you can see, we've got a bent hook that's come, the hook's bent around. And we're going to, we're going to cover that up so that this gets closed. So when that, you can see it's open right there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this as a gauge though. I'm going to start my thread uh, right in the middle here. I'm going to have a really small head on this. It's, it's just a really light dressed head. And then, but we need to close that up immediately. And then in the last video I was talking about how I was addicted to Davey McPhee's videos. I had a guy write in and he said, it seems that materials are at his, at his he has... What was it called? How do you say it? It's a... Materials are at his command. Yeah, materials are at his command or something like that. I can't remember the best quote. I'll find it. I'm going to go find it before we get done. But the thing, I st I've been doing this lately, and he puts his wax down here, and I put it on the... Because I kept catching it. And so when I started, I just put the wax on the top of my finger to see if it was easier for me. So I'm going to start that. But when you wax that thread, the point of that whole thing was 
when you wax that thread, it's almost like instant glue. It, it'll, that thing will grab that hook so easy. So, and especially with this small thread, it makes it a lot easier. So we're just work back here just a little bit and cut this off and switch our glasses to things we can see with. Now I'm going to take this, I don't know if I mentioned that, my rib, I didn't, I said my counter rib is small gold wire. If you want to use oval tinsel, if you want to use whatever, you know, whatever you like, the problem with using thicker tinsels is that when we go into this, this marabou, it lays it down a little bit more. So I kind of, I, I just kind of, on the, la the one we did last week, I used oval tinsel. I'm going to use wire on this. And so... I worked back just a little ways. I'm going to come back right to where that, where this eye returns right there. So you can see where that eye is returning, the hook does. And just put your thread underneath there and just catch it. Don't, you don't have to grab it. You don't have to do anything. And let it roll up. I'm rolling it up to that side. And then I'm going to just fold this back. And I'm going to lay it right beside that. So they lay right side by side. You can see it's they're parallel to one another, right? All I'm doing is I'm covering, I'm going to, make that go away and I can run that all the way down doesn't matter I'm gonna run this down to just nice even thread you know just practice your thread control right now and so I'm gonna stop that just in front of that hook point I mean not if it's hanging there you can see it's just a touch if you want to go right to the hook point and I mentioned that in last week's fly and I've mentioned it in dozens of videos I always use the hook as, a, as a, a measurement tool. And so on this particular style of fly, I like it to end just in front of the hook or touching the hook point. Now, this is where this becomes, I'm going to eliminate this just so it's easier to work with. This stuff here, I'm going to keep it solely because it's getting hard to find. And I love that on my Calabeta snips. And so it's just this color. It's the... It's just a very buggy, I don't know, it's just, it's beautiful. And so when I take this, this is going to be the tail and the body. And what I'm going to do, as you saw right there, watch when I stroke this feather up, it comes up like this, and suddenly they're falling apart. So that's, that's as much body right there as I can get out of this. Without a lot of those, you're going to have a few stragglers here and there anyway. But without this coming undone, about because I this is going to be my tail so when I come up here I'm going to have about this much tail right and then that's going to be my body when those when I stroke that up with the other ones I get about where the tail was that's when they start falling out and all it does is just makes it messy you're trying to wrap it so but like I said you're going to have a few and you can do this with any marabou feather on earth right so here's the tail so just wet it slightly just Damp it. I've got. I've always got that sponge. I show it all the time. That Tom Gingrich made me, who's a spectacular tire. But he he made this up because I kept saying, "Don't put it in your mouth." And it's a. And that, this thing's been around. It's got Velcro on it. I mentioned in a lot of videos. And so we're gonna tie this in. I don't want that to be too wet when I tie it because I like to see the. Uh, I kind of should have let that not be quite so damp. And so. I like this to be fuzzy so I can see it when I wrap it. So we'll just dry it out a little bit. Okay, we'll have to work with that. So now we're going to take this and we're going to get the feather, the length of the, we're going to stroke this back so we get the length of the body, of the hook I mean. Uh, you can do the length of the body, you can use the hook length, whatever it is you prefer. I like it to be about the overall hook length to right about there. So at a point, basically right right about there so I'm going, to, I'm going to lay this flat like this i wish that was fuzzier just so i want i want it to fuzz out really quickly when you're watching it go around the hook so just a little dampness so come in here gonna measure it it's about right there we're going to get an opportunity right now to check it again and now you're going to have the wax a little bit of wax on your thread right now just hit that and just lock that in. If you're sure your body's where you're, if you're sure your tail, and I showed this in a video a while back, if you take your scissors and measure what you want it to be, you can kind of guess, right? You can say, I want the length of the hook, that's right there. It's a little bit long, so you can just 
address it right now. I slid that whole thing up. Okay, and then when you do that, check to see your thread's still where it belongs. So I'm good right there. I just I slid it, didn't, I could have pulled it if I had that wax on there. So now we're going to, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna get this, it was a little bit too far forward. Sorry about that, I was gonna tie a different fly right in front of you. Okay, just get it really tight. And I want you to come in here and I want you to cinch this down and make sure that that's really tight. So when we wrap this body, no way your tail slides over. I don't, if this, I really crank down on that and then just make sure it's nice and tight. <clears throat> and now nice even wraps forward. Just get back up here and we're gonna end this just about where this eye, where is that fly? Uh, you can't see it in that one. I don't know what I did with it. Any rate, that other one, here it is. When you see this, it's gonna have a collar, right? And we're gonna have a small head, we're gonna have a collar. So this is where everything ends, right? At the thread there, at the halfway, that's where our head's gonna be. So we're gonna have a collar. So we're gonna end this right about where the return of the hook is. So just look over your hook right there. <clears throat> Give it a half hitch. If you're using a rotary, I'm gonna use the rotary today. And so lay this out just like always, but kind of get it a little bit twisted right when you start. You don't want it super thick. You don't want it to lay out really thick, but I want you to get a really clean turn right here. Notice I grab the tail so it can't move, and that's why I wanted it. And this is, you're, you're gonna love this body. It's just so, any of these stragglers kind of get out of your way just so you can see it. You're gonna get this beautiful body. Just keep twisting just a little so it keeps stranded just like that. And now you've got the sexiest body that's ever been seen. And I'm gonna tie this off. I'm gonna let that unravel. I'm gonna get it really tight. I'm trying to keep it right on the bottom. I want it, I want to have a little, I'm gonna come forward a little bit and I'm gonna clip this off, but I want it to kind of go right into the two, between the two pieces of wire. So just get a nice tight turn on it. You can take it and wrap it right back over it so it's not in your way. And then you, it's a thick stem. You're gonna to have to cut it off and just take a look right now that you, when you wrapped it back, take a clean look, reach down here. This will fight you. I was doing that fly last week and I left a stem in there and man, that fought me. I mean, it's just, you do a few and you'll get used to it. I, I haven't tied one of these things other than those two, I think in, God, I don't know how long. I, I, I used to tie them all the time, but you, you forget. And so make sure that there's no stem. I, I wrapped three forward, two back over it, and then I cut it off. So I was hoping it would be back in here. And so now we've got this really pretty body. Now it wouldn't hurt to give it a little shot of wax and just finish it off right now and get a half hitch in here. Whoops, miss. <clears throat> so now you can see, and somebody else wrote in on last, that the overwhelming thing last, uh, last week's video was everybody agreed that watching Davy McPhail was like a, their addiction as well as mine. But uh, the other ones that came in were, have you ever done this without covering the body because it's so gorgeous? And I have, I, I mean, it just, you could go, you could finish this fly right now. And man, it, it would be, it, it'd be really pretty. And I do it on, like I said earlier, I said the little ones, the little calabatus nymphs. I basically do this, but just think of it, it's small, right? And do a soft tackle right there, boom. It, it, it hunts. You, it, it's, a, it's a simple, simple fly. But we're going to dress this one up as I did for the first one for the steelhead. And so this is kind of a in-between body. I, I could very easily put a badge or a furnace on here, something brown. It's kind of darker. It's kind of in-between. So I'm just going to pick, I grab two dark barred gingers, and I'm going to take the one with the most distinct uh, black, the rachis, which is the stem up the middle. You can see that black, it's darker there. Uh, this one's got a little bit more red in it, but this one's, I like that darker. It's gonna help me contrast this fly. And so, it, but you know, it's just, it's just an accent in there anyway. It, it does have a function. It kind of, you know, it kind of fills the body and kind of reaches around like this and fills it in, but mostly it's, it's just pretty. 
And so you're going to see in here, when you look at these feathers, right, make sure you don't have one that doesn't have any too much missing, any problems with it. It's hard to find these big feathers. This is a size, and I didn't mention it, it's a size 4, 79, 89 hook. And, so, and I don't go too much bigger than this in this particular fly because, it, again, it was supposed to be kind of hexagenial looking. And so I, I just keep it right there. But I'm going to, if you look at these feathers, when you spin these, this side is, is very dull. And this is the side that has the color in it, the reds and the browns and the blacks. So make sure that the shiny side is to your right. Now, come in here and just wax that thread so that that's really, really helps when you're working with, with hackle stems so, because it just grips. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to, I'm going to give it one turn right in front and back and I just do a figure eight and I'm going to make sure I catch that stem I'm going to it, that it's out of my way you can see it's right here and I try to get that to go in between there as well is whenever I'm working with these hooks that have a return like this I end up just trying to keep that in the middle but right now I'm not worried about it now I'm just going to uh, I'll catch that when I'm done but I'm going to make sure that stays all that's going to do is when you when you see these heads that are they're really short and they're tapered you don't have things on all sides you, you got things that taper down so if I keep in the middle of that keep in the middle on the top when I come back everything starts building things together so you don't get there and go poof there's this giant gob at the head and you can't get the that uh, attractive head that you're looking for so I'm going to come in here making sure and the reason I set that the way I set it is so that the, the feather's on its rotation. And I want the shiny sides, and regardless of how you set them. And I can assure you, but my materials are not at my command the way Davey McFeels is. He ties them in different. Charlie Craven ties his in different. Or Clark does it different. Every, everybody has their style, right? And there's, such a, there's so many resources out there. None of them are right or wrong. It, when you get the master, I mean... You know, when you get to where you can just do whatever, but if the things you do in advance, the things that go underneath, like putting it there and, and the, keeping it one way, makes your finished product better if you're consistent with it. So I want that hackle to the right, and I'm going to put one complete turn right there. I just always like to see that one complete turn. And as you see, I'm, I'm going to set a pretty good angle to my, to my hackle. And so, because I don't want a ton of, I don't want a ton of turns on here. I want it to look full, but I don't want it to look really gaudy. And I don't want to cover up all that body material that we, we had underneath there. So I'm going to catch this with one turn right there. And then if you have, and as you can see right now, before I advance, as you can see, the hackles are laying backwards. So that's, that's ideal for a wet fly. And so and it's supposed to marry. So when I go forward, I'm going to go really quick through this thing and I won't trap anything that way. And I'm going to set it really, I don't want it really, I don't want to trap that material. I just, it's such a sexy body underneath there that I just don't want to mess it up. And so the faster you go, the less you'll have problems. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to give that two tight turns. I'm going to break that off, come back and I'll go right over top of this hackle or this uh, wire, excuse me. We're just going to catch it. And the beauty of that is I'm actually tightening that. When, I, when the wire's wrapped this way and your thread's going this way, as you tighten that thread, you'll actually tighten your wire slightly. If you go the opposite direction, you have to be careful that it doesn't back off. Copy. So now I'm going to just build that. I'm just going to build a little bit of taper to this, catching this wire, just so it doesn't want to slide off on me. Come in here and get that hackle stem. And now you can still see the fuzzy stuff underneath there. It's so pretty. And now we will not wax our thread. We will, we're gonna take a, we're gonna do a dubbing loop. And you're not gonna need much here. This is just a, this is the fur collar. This is, it's a collar. It is the most elegant, beautiful looking thing. You can, you can do this on a lot of flies, and it really, really, really dresses them up. And so I'm going to use, I, I don't want you to have a ton of line, line, not line, thread out here. You can use maybe, 
have two, two and a half inches. You don't have to be a mile away from this thing. Come in here, I like to wrap it around it once, like that, just to, just to set that so it's tight at the base. And then just move forward and drop a half hitch right there. So you can see now we know that that's where our head's gonna end. We're not gonna go anywhere past that. We've got lots of room to work with right now. Make sure your hackle's still pretty. We get that out of the way. Leave your leave your loop open while you're doing this so you can see it. Try to have it so it's not rolling. Don't you know? I you've heard me say it many times. I I'm having to tie sideways like this, right? So, it, but when I don't do that, I, it doesn't lay against the table. And so if you don't do something to keep it winding, you're gonna do all this work getting this stuff in your hand. You reach down, it'll all be this will all be twisted up, right? So if you if you set it like that, whatever you do so it doesn't spin in your hand. It's not as critical when you're doing dubbed bodies because it's not as, you're gonna to have to hold this, you'll see in a second. So just make sure that that doesn't spin on you. So now I'm gonna take this pine squirrel and I pretty much have, pretty much I think forever used pine squirrel in this, or I don't, I'm not sure if I ever used anything else because it's just the perfect length. You can see that it's it's about somewhere between a depends on where you pick on here between a quarter and a half inch long. You're gonna you'll be looking for something about a quarter when you put it in here. And I'm just folding the skin back just slightly, so you can see that it's just barely back. And I'm looking, making sure everything's even. It's real pretty, and I can come in here and right against the skin. And don't, and if, even if you cut into the skin, that's fine. It, it, it'll all be hooked together because what you want to end up with is that right there. And so we're going to look at it and you've got to kind of get an idea in your mind how long you want that. And before you do anything, just cut it. Just make sure it's nice. That's how long I want that to be. And you're going to have a little bit sticking out this way and a little to the left. And so now it's really easy if you just have a, a gentle touch and make sure if it's a little bit crooked, just try to get it where you want it in your hand right now. And that's and this is why you're doing this in your hand. You're going to get another chance to level it out. But if this is all spun up and you're sitting here going for a half hour like you've seen me do in the other videos, it makes it really hard to get this in here and, and just settle it. Come in and I'm going to adjust this. We don't need much of this. And just just get it where you want it right now. You want maybe a sixteenth of an inch out this side, right? And you see how easy it is to just just move it. It's not, you're not you're not in a hurry right now. Just move it where you want it. I don't tend to put it really close to the body right now because when you spin a dubbing loop and you've got hackle, it tends to grab it. It usually will come out of your thread, but it, the closer you know, if you get it way up close to the hook, because you've got and so you're doing two things right now. A, you're keeping a little pressure on your left hand so that it's not really loose. And then you're just adjusting it however you want right here. And you can bump these hairs if you don't like them. You can pull them out right now. I'd, I'd wait a little bit if I were you. It's, I tend to, when I move those, when they're in the loop, if I try to take them out, there's other ones caught and you, you move your whole loop around. But you can see, I'm just bumping this, right? getting it in here, getting it the length I want. So right there, about a sixteenth of an inch, right? And it's all one direction. You look at it, it's, it's all nice and clean. Just give it a nice slow turn like this in your hand. I'm just spinning it with my right hand down here until you see it, you know, kind of see I'm catching a few of those, they'll come out. Until you, everything's good, as soon as you know it's good, you can just spin it. You can spin as tight as you want be a little bit careful, and this is why I said it'll catch some of your hackle. If you're really close, it's just a little bit, you can see it, they just came out really simple. So now I'm gonna spin that nice and tight, and I've got plenty of room to get up here and start my, my rotation, right? And so I'm gonna get over here. So I'm gonna come around, ooh, don't wanna do that one. You know, the cool cats never make mistakes on these things but they don't have to tie sideways. 
Er, da, 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 come here. Wow, we might have to cut. No, we won't. All right, so I slipped that off. It was chattering away too much. Come around, get it started to where, right where it starts to touch the fly or to the hook. And now just stroke it back. Just get your hands just a little bit wet and just stroke this back. You're going to lose a little bit of hair as you go around, right? Just stroke it back with just damp fingers. Go around it. Just keep right tight turns. You're going to finish off right at the head. Just stroke those back. Just, just barely wet your fingers and it'll, it'll go right back where it belongs. Jeremy's got me extra sideways today. So my stuff's hitting the bench. Just hook this. Just go around one time. It was a lot easier getting that off when I didn't want it to come off than I wanted right there. So two turns forward, just catch your thread and then go right back over top of it. And now damp your fingers just slightly and get a hold of that so you're nice and get most of those fibers. Take that. We want this ended right on the top. GSP is tough to cut with without fraying, so try to get a clean hit on it. So just, and now I'm just going to get as many of those fibers as I can out, and I'm going to tie it, and there's virtually no buildup to this thread. So I like to see the head. I like to have a little bit of a you know, bump to it. It doesn't have to be really big, but it, just work back and forth and get a nice, clean, as soon as you like the build, just take your time, look at it. You can't do it all in one spot. Don't try to just sit in one spot and build and build and build and build because you'll it'll pile up. You'll boom, you'll have the soft head. And so four or five turns, go forward six, come back, do four or five turns, and just keep wedging up towards the base until you get what you like. So I'm just going to finish this off with a whip finish. If you're using a tool, that's fine too. Just just get what you like. And it's and this is going to kind of disappear a little bit because I'm going to put the color on it. Give me that. All right. So now you've got this absolutely gorgeous collar. I just there's nothing sexier than that thing. If you want to make those bigger, like on that one I did last week, I used the ostrich hurl. Originally, when I first did that, I did this on both of them because I just think it is just so pretty. So now we're going to take, and you can do this. I've done other videos with this in the past about taking GSP. In the old days, when GSP first showed up, it was all white. And so you markered it with everything. And they said they couldn't dye it. Obviously, they figured out how to dye it. But the color I want isn't there yet. So now just come in here, and it's super simple. Just touch it. Just touch the thread, and it'll absorb into all of this. And it'll just, just give it a few drops here and there. Boom. Perfect. And then we're just going to give it a hit of lacquer. These things just don't look good. Kind of dampen your, 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 hat, your uh, collar again just slightly. And we're going to just hit it with a, just a drop of head cement right on top. And you'll see that's going to... When that darkens, when it gets all wet, it's, it takes a couple hits of this stuff to make a head. You can't, you don't do it in one shot. And try to miss hitting your collars if you can. I touched it probably a little bit somewhere. I can't see anything. But as you see, that's starting to, as it starts to darken up, you're gonna, it'll, it's gonna give me that almost identical, you can see, these colors are virtually identical and it's a stupid red sharpie and it's just absolutely perfect to what I what I like you know that's just my that's just how I like to see it but it's a pretty quick fly if you know it's a, a really elegant fly I would really encourage you to do other bodies other styles with this especially if you're a lake angler doing you know Calabatus, uh, damselfly nymphs. You can do you can do blue marabou. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's super easy to go through, and it makes just the most elegant little body you'll ever see. And on top of all of that, it fishes like a champ. Hope you liked it. Hope it helps you out.